Hi, uh, it's Bob here. And uh, this is uh, something I felt I needed to do. I avoided it, but I, I have to do it. Um, a lot of us lost someone. Um, I lost a dear friend for my entire life. And it's, uh, well, this is going to be hard. I'll try to keep it short, by the way. Um, my friend Norm MacDonald. Norm MacDonald, um, or as David would call him, Norm MacDonald. Many of you um, have been responding, the comedy community, comedians, writers, actors, uh, but people, people that, that are smart, that understood Norm, that loved Norm. Um, I'm recording this for all of you. And yes, selfishly, I'm recording it for myself because I need to, I don't know, people were contacting uh, people of, that I work with and asking for statements and comments, and I just felt it'd be better to do it this way in a, a conversational, almost non-quotable way because <laughs> uh, I am uh, not functioning too well. This is... Uh, and this isn't about me, but it's going to be from my perspective. So this is a loss when you lose someone. I've lost two sisters and a couple parents. Uh, I mean, my parents, not random parents. And I've uh, lost many friends. And this is uh, just a fucking knife in the heart uh, for all of us that were close to him and all of you who loved him. And uh, for me personally... This is, uh, I don't know, I'm just just doing this on the fly and seeing uh, if it can make a point or give some stories that might bring you a smile and let you even know from my perspective of why this is a beloved, wonderful man who we've lost. Um. I guess I'll, I'll start uh, less solemn. That's impossible, right? Because, you know, um, when it happened yesterday, uh, today is uh, Wednesday, by the way, and we're going to put this out uh, tonight, uh, you know, after midnight, where most of you that love Norm will be awake. And the people close to him will be up because we, we're fucked up. We just can't sleep. But um, I found out um, that he had passed before it hit the... Deadline, Hollywood. Why do they call it deadline? Now, Norm would probably not mind me saying that, but he would have said, you know, he would have deadline. He would have hit the dead. Uh, God damn it, I love that man. So, that being said, um, I found out, and then, um, then it was in the press, and then the floodgates opened, and I didn't, I couldn't even go online. I can't look at clips of him. Although I have, right before I recorded this, wanted to see a couple things. Um, everybody's sharing stuff, and, you know, uh, he was a comedic genius. Anybody that didn't get it, uh, I'm sorry for you that you didn't get it. Um, he was one of the, uh, well, he's one of the most important people in my life, and one of the sweetest, and um, we loved each other. So I met him, he was 17 years old, and I was 21. 22, it was 1978, I think, or 79, one of those two, probably 78, and I was working in Ottawa at a club called, I don't know, uh, Snickerdoodle or something, I, I, I don't even remember, it was a Giggles, I don't know, but Norm was in the audience, I think he was doing some stand-up at 17, I'm not sure, but he was like literally six feet from me, so it would have been a good distance for COVID, where he was sitting. He had a, a bushy haircut, a big one. I'm sure you've seen it. Some people, I, I really loved seeing some pictures uh, that people posted of him at that age that I saw because uh, it was this sweet guy who had a brain and bandwidth that most people aren't born with who was also, like most comedians, an outsider. Uh, and we talked. We talked um, at the bar, and I remembered it specifically a few years later, when I met him, for real, um, in clubs in Canada, I think it, 
was it yuck yucks? I'm not sure. It just doesn't matter, right? But the point is, I, he was in my life, and I was in his in, a, in an acquaintance kind of way. And then a um, bunch of years passed, and we would see each other on the comedy scene, and we became friends. And um, I, everybody I know would get into the room to watch him on stage. Sometimes he would purposely tank, as you know. Uh, anybody that <laughs> understands, they call him a comics comic. That's just, um, you know... I hate that expression, but I guess it's true because um, comedians couldn't help but laugh at him because he was so fucking brilliant. And he would say things that might not be able to be said by anybody. I mean, they wouldn't be able to be said by anyone else. It's, we're talking about an original voice, and his influences were all the usual suspects, all the people that, you know, that love comedy you can see who his roots were but he found a way to do things that came from a voice that nobody had I, I'd never heard anyone like him he um, loved dark humor from the very beginning if you look at these clips I was able to see a couple of them when he was one of his very earliest appearances I think it was on Conan he's just this young thin lad um, and talking about death and dark stuff and murder and those are themes because Norm needed to feel things very, very deeply. And Norm did feel things very, very deeply. So when on that amazing Letterman appearance two weeks before David went off the air and Norm was the last stand-up comedian to go on there, um, and I only know this, I, I know all about it because we had talked about it, but watching, um, listening to the Howard Stern interview from 2016 is a valuable piece. Um just to see uh, his love for David. He didn't know what he was going to say. Um, and the people that he really loved, um, he would tell them. So if you're one of those lucky people, because he, he'd gone through a lot. Norm, uh, was very complicated, right? So we're talking about a guy at 14, 15 years old, had a difficult upbringing. And he, he said it. Uh, you know, he, he made it known he didn't have much of a father figure in his life, so David was kind of one. Um, he revered intelligence and was drawn to it, and when people got him, it meant the world to him, and that's uh, kind of the thing that made him a comics comic because I hate saying that. i got to erase that from my mind. But he would love smart people. He, he loved Howard, and he loved David, and he, you know, Everybody, Conan, he had such a, a strong kinship. And uh, as Norm would say, God bless uh, all those people for getting him and loving him um, because they're so funny and uh, smart. Um, I got roasted on Comedy Central. I'm going to go all over the place because I can't. Uh, I don't know what else to do. This is me just saying I love Norm. When I got roasted, he... I talked to him a week before the roast, and he called me and he said, um, uh, I, Saget, I, I can't, this is a bad impression, I can't help but do it though. Saget, I, I can't say mean things about you, you're my friend. I don't even want to do it, but I'm going to do it because it's you. And uh, we'd been through a bunch of stuff, you know, you, we did dirty work and that thing. It's so funny, people say, Bob doesn't get through you know any interview without mentioning at least twice that movie. Now a cheer comes down my face. Um, I loved uh, working with him. It wasn't easy because he was a perfectionist and he was a complex carbohydrate. He was, he was uh, I don't want to say was, but I have to. Uh, I got to be in reality myself. But, you know, so we'd gone through so much together, uh, ups and downs. And, and so at the roast, he called me a week out, said, I, 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 I'm I, just going to read jokes from a 40s joke book. And I said, Norm, uh, and that's fine. I mean, you know what you're doing, but uh, you got to curse. I don't want to do that. And I said, well, if just throw in an arbitrary fuck now and then. Nah, I'm not going to do that. And then you get to the roast. and Okay, so what you see usually with the extended cut, which is not what it is, it's just everything's, it's everything, everything about Norm is the big lie. There's a uh, 
a 20 minute version is 20 minutes of footage where the people that were there know what happened in the room. Half of them did and half of them didn't because they didn't know what was going on because they didn't get it. But he was just taking the shot and doing, and people are like, this was the most brilliant thing. And it was, but a great stand up, and Norm was one of the greatest ever, uh, knows that they're not going to, bombing is not, uh, doesn't matter. And that's what was fearless and beautiful about him because um, bombing is just part of the art, part of the performance of it. And if you can offend people and, uh, and get laughs, then you're, you're in some kind of real special ethos. And he was doing that by reading these jokes. And then uh, there were about eight minutes that it was, it was you know, it was quiet. Um, and that made... There's, you don't see the comedians laughing harder, but all of my friends, that's the idea of that roast was as horrible as some of the things that were said because it's a roast and it was a different time. But Norm, of course, chose the path of dignity and did, and did jokes. And, and I, we were laughing on the phone the week before that he would hold the, the, the cards up to his head and do Johnny, you know, to the you know, face like a cauliflower. But we were doing all that stuff because he idolized Johnny as uh, all of us did. And um, so he was, they cut out the, the part that was bombing, and uh, but it did, I would have loved to have seen the whole damn thing. I think the roast should have just been a bunch of people doing a bunch of horrible dick jokes and, uh, wow, some really wrong stuff on there, right? Um, but it was funny for a lot of people. That's, it's really split how you look at stuff from years ago, and people know what funny is, and Norm did the most brilliant thing, and I was so excited when he said, I said, you got a fucking dog face. And that, that if you look at the thing, I don't like looking at myself, and who does? But uh, I like looking at me. But when he said that, um, that's when I was like, yeah, come on, come on, <laughs> start cursing. Just throw in arbitrary curses. Because at that point, he was digging out of a hole. That's <laughs> what he was doing. But how fucking brilliant. Because it was so anti-roast. Because he didn't want to roast his friend. Um, and he also didn't want to do a roast. So there's, you know, it was a good toss up whether he was doing it because he didn't want to hurt his friend. And also he didn't want to do a roast. He didn't love the form. He didn't mind listening to the old ones, but he wasn't equipped mentally or care enough to make fun of someone. It just, you know, it seemed like a, oh, okay, that's the joke. Uh, make it fun of somebody. Oh, great, great format. Um, so of course he's reading the sports section while the other comedians are doing their stuff. And that, it's just, you know, it's brilliance. It's an Andy Kaufman type thing or anybody who knows what comedy is and doing some kind of, it's just norm. It's just norm. It's what he found funny. And then at the end, and I thought about, do I play it on here right now? And the answer is no. You can watch it. You can see it. I mean, he at the end of the thing, uh, he got emotional and... Um, he doesn't mean to do it. He doesn't know what he's going to say, and he doesn't do it that often. But uh, now I'm in present tense, right? Because I can't accept that he's gone, and that's the shock that we're going through. 61. That's a sin. That's a sin for all of us that he's gone. Anyway, to just finish that one thought, um, he told me, uh, you know, he loved me, and he told me publicly and um, I loved him, and I love him. I don't, I don't, what do we do with that when we lose someone, right? Especially before their time. And I know most of you listening have lost someone, especially now, right? So he cared about people a lot, and he felt the human condition so deeply that it affected him in different ways. You know, he, he would maybe act out back in the day, and uh, those specifics needed and in other ways he would just even be more compassionate and then in other ways in stand-up he would just go to the darkest place he could possibly go and um, he made me better he made me better as a as a comedian uh, but more importantly um, he was a genuine friend and um, our friendship uh, was really very deep um 
And I could say that. Uh, I could say that without uh, my name-dropping bullshit that I do sometimes and all of my other dumbass vices. Like, everybody was posting when he died, and, and they love him. They, they, you know, everybody's hurting uh, over this one. Uh, this one. Yeah, right. I always, why can't unfunny people die? That's the, uh, Saget, well, yeah, why'd you say that? But he, uh, a, a week ago, um, we'd been working on something that we were uh, going to do. And I think, everybody asked me, did you know? Every, we're all TMZ, but also it's human to ask, did you know? I, I felt it. Um, I knew something was wrong. I think a lot of us felt it, and then you just figure, well, that's norm, you know, so he's, whatever he's going through, you see it with a lot of us, you know, when people change appearance or whatever, but his 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 mind was still amazing, right? Um, and I have off-road stories about things he did. <laughs> anyway, just try to stay on, on one subject is... Um, I'd been texting with him, and I, I knew that the last month was a turn in whatever was going on, and I suspected it was this uh, cancer. I really love when everybody puts out F cancer. Maybe that should be the new non-for-profit, because uh, fuck it. It's enough. It's enough. Let's just let's uh, get that thing somehow. I don't know. We're all test tubes for what we're trying to do with cancer, and thank God some people are moving forward healthy. He should be one of those people. Anyway, uh, about two weeks ago, he texted me, how are you? Are, are, what are you doing? Are you, are you uh, doing stand-up? And I answered him with, you know, much too many words. And then I didn't hear back. And then last week, <laughs> last week I got a text. And it just said, I love you. And I didn't say much back. I just said, I love you, Norm. And that was my last communication with him. But he didn't mince words. And he didn't mince emotions. So he wasn't out doing bullshit. He wasn't just out to, you know. Oh, here's the emotional moment in the telethon where we pretend we're feeling something so we can. Uh, one of the gifts to my life is that he loved me and that I loved him. Hell, I'm always going to love him. I mean, there's not another guy like this guy. Um, I'll tell you a couple other things instead of how it turned into a, a, a slobbering maniac. Um I don't know. I'm just doing this because I don't know how else to do it. Um, Adam Egget was somebody that he loved and worked with him. And uh, everybody's hurting. We're all reaching out to each other. You know, it's a lot of comedians have been reaching out, and texting and calling. And we're all, this is, you know, it's a big, a big chasm for everybody. I don't know why I said chasm. What Fuck what I say that for. Why'd you use chasm? That's not even the right use of it. What are you, trying to go across a reservoir? He wouldn't say that. Reservoir's not funny. God, um, Adam's a good man. I went on Norm's podcast before it was a podcast, before he did the Netflix version of it. And uh, he said, yeah, come over. Yeah, is it audio only? Or do I have to look good? And, yeah, it's audio only. Um, Norm is really good at lying. And I'm sure you've read all this stuff. He was incredibly skillful at it. and But you could tell what talking to if you knew, if you knew him, you, you would either, if you see him, you would see it in his eyes that he's lying. Or then you're not sure if he is, because sometimes he wasn't. <laughs> but, he, but he always had that look. What a charming uh, motherfucker. Um, shouldn't have said that. <laughs> charming is okay. But he... Um, told me to go do the podcast. I go over there. Adam is there. All of a sudden, there's cameras. <laughs> I'm like, it's Norm. You, I got to go fix my hair. What the hell? You didn't tell me that this was... I don't know what they're doing. I mean, they're putting it out. You know, blaming other people. 
like he didn't know it was a video. And then, you know, he's helping me publicize a book. And then whenever he would say something horrible, he would say the name of the book and hold the book up. I mean, he, I, I laughed at him so, but left with him. I mean, uh, he's just, he, I go on the podcast. Uh, if you're, uh, sorry, this will be profane. Um, and it was worse than what I'm about to say. So if you're uh, 12, probably 15, just go to bed. I get on the show and he goes, uh, so uh, you like a, you like a big, fat, juicy cock? And he added other uh, adjectives in there. And I was like, this is your show? What are you doing? So our relationship had a bit of an odd couple type thing uh, where we were, we would, and he loved that engage uh, engagement. I don't know. He loved the fact that I would <laughs> give him shit or kind of be in a parental role oddly enough, or an older brother. Uh, he has a brother, Neil. He's a very good man. Um, and his mom and his son. He was such a great father, such a great father. Um, and I'm sending so much love to them. You know, it's... Uh, I also have to mention someone. I'm just going to say her name. His closest friend for uh, many years, uh, Lori Jo. And I'm just sending uh, so much love to her. This is so hard for his family and for friends like Adam and many other people that you're, you're reading. You know who they are. You know who, who loved him. Um, and it doesn't matter, you know, if you see somebody every minute norm's not a guy you would spend a lot of daily time with oddly enough the past year and a half we were spending time together or at least talking a lot um the covid thing had him hold up more and when you find out when we all find out in retrospect as you all have seen all the stuff about cancer and his stand-up and you go oh wow this makes frightening sense now and there is after nine years of of fighting cancer um and I don't know any details. I can only speak from my experience and knowing that I was talking to a, a comedian that you all know, and he was saying that he believes he is at peace. And what's interesting is Norm was um, believed in faith. Norm was a spiritual man, and he kept it quiet. He kept a lot of his stuff quiet. But there's a reason his exclamatories would be, good Lord, good God. He would say things like that, and um, he believed in God. And um, I had people in my life that were uh, very sick, um, and someone that I care about so much, and he would say, I'm, I'm going to pray for them. And he, he didn't mince words, and that's, you know, I'm going to pray for them. That's what someone that cares about you says. You know, this is not some guy doing his hijinks where the eyebrows go up and he's got that flim flam man sparkle in his eye. Yes, yeah, uh, nobody wants to say sparkle in his eye, but twinkle, that's the, that's the operative, right? But um, I'll share a couple more things. I don't know how much longer I can go on. He had people that he uh, truly loved in his life that were always part of it, Adam Sandler, and Conan, and um, a lot of really interesting uh, filmmakers and actors and people that he really regarded highly. He loved old films. Um, he loved Clint Eastwood. He loved Burt Reynolds. We all know who he loved. You could watch what he would do um, on SNL. He also loved, you know, being that guy that's... this. Norm MacDonald and a lot of comedians are the result of someone telling you your whole childhood, don't do that. Uh, you can't say that. Don't do that. Well, there he goes. It's two years of OJ jokes. And uh, and that's all anybody talks about, you know. Uh, but it was uh, charming. <laughs> it, 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 for me, it was, you know, I mean, just that's the shit that he would do. And he would also speak well of in a weird way. It's just, um, 
there will there will be many people influenced and are influenced by Norm Macdonald, but uh, there can't ever be another Norm Macdonald. I'll share a couple of the quick things that are fun. Um, there's a story I'm not going to tell it, but it was when he loved to play jokes on me and make a fool out of me, and I was playing gar- golf with him and Artie Lang after Dirty Work came out. And uh, it's a drinking game every time I mention the film's title. But it was important because we loved it. And he loved it. In fact, before I tell you this crazy thing, I will tell you that the night the movie premiered, Norm and I knew, we saw the poster for Dirty Work. And it was in 1998. And uh, Norm and I looked at each other. We saw the poster and it said, Coming Soon on it. We both did it literally at the same time of Carson. Coming Soon, Kiss of Death. We didn't say that at the same time. But you don't kind of go, hey, sometime in the future, this movie's coming out. And it it premiered on the weekend that uh, Michael Jordan played his last two games with the Bulls. So, oh, there's our 15-year-old boy audience. They're gone. So we went to theaters. Norm and I got in a car the night the movie came out, and we went to seven theaters. And they were all packed. (laughs) It was Century City, Hollywood, Westwood. We literally went to seven theaters, one after another. And... People were screaming. They were laughing, not screaming, like, get me the fuck out of here. Um, and we thought we had a hit. We, this is like, we're high-fiving. It's just like, you know, Ralph Cramden going, oh, we're going gonna, gonna, gonna to make it, honey. This is it. And um, we were so excited to see it with an audience. And they were laughing so hard. And that was so awesome, right? And then the next morning, the producer, Bob Simons, called me. He said, sorry, buddy. You know, I just didn't do it. And, um, and that was that. So uh, it's almost appropriate. So I read somebody call it a bomb or, you know, it, it tanked or whatever. And uh, I guess that's the point. That's the point of, of the underdog. And uh, many people, it's a cult favorite, whatever that means. You don't have to join a cult to like the movie. So anyway, the movie came out. And uh, oh, this is right before it came out. Norm and uh, Artie Lang and I are playing golf up in, I don't know where we were, some country club outside of New York. And then I already just got a brand new Cadillac. I told the story on Stern, and I, I just drove it back. I wanted to drive it. Oh, I'll do this. I'll tell you, know, Mr. Control, asshole, me. And I bottomed out the car. I hit a, a big pothole, and I told you I wasn't going to tell the story, but I might as well tell the truncated version. And it, it busted the tire, and it cracked the axle, and Artie literally had to, get the whole thing redone. I still own two grand, I think. I tried to pay him, but I did pay to have a, a guy come with a tow truck, change the tire. The guy comes to change the tire. Norm comes over, says, uh, hey, this guy, his kid really likes you. He wants, you got to sign an autograph and send it to him. When he's done, wait till he's done, and then go over and, and, uh, and get his information so you can send the kid an 8 by 10 So the guy does all the work, and it's, I get it like 800 bucks out of an ATM. I give it to the guy. And I say, hey, I can, give me your address. I'll send it to your son. He goes, what are you talking about? I don't know who you are. And I look over and Norman Artie are just pounding the pavement, laughing their asses off. That's the kind of shit that was very similar to the experience of the characters they were in, in uh, the movie. And then there was the Norm a couple years later that um, I had him over my parents uh, for dinner. Now, my parents and my daughters, and I'm actually going to put some slides on this audio right now. That'll be when, my, when it gets posted on the YouTube and on the, <laughs> and on the whatever assets. I'm really talking hardcore Wi-Fi talk right now. And uh, Norm was really sweet to my kids. They loved him. This is uh, hard for them. And they... Um, he would, my youngest was really young, and he would just sit on the ground like he did with his son and just play with him. He had a very childlike quality, and it took him to a kinder time, I think, and he really could relate to, to kids, you know? And he, damn it, he was a good father and really good with kids because they were innocent, and they didn't have all the bullshit that he couldn't take from people. Um, he really just, when he couldn't stand somebody, he just, got away he just stayed to his own you know and that's probably a smart way to go about it rather than doing what everybody does which is start fights these days um these days but anyway uh so my parents who he'd met on the set of that movie which i will not name it again 
he went to their condo in uh, Brentwood for dinner. And my, my dad would make, my mom, I don't know who made them, uh, beef ribs. And they would cook them for 24 hours. And they would uh, be very soft, fall off the bone. And so my dad would go, he used to be in the meat business. So he would go market to market and find the least fatty bone. Anyway, they cooked for probably two days for a meal to have normal. And it was just my kids and my parents and my nephew and Norm and me. And uh, he really, he loved the meal. But more importantly, he, uh, when he, when something hit him hard, he would, Emotionally, he would make a proclamation. He made a proclamation and he said, I just want to say, and this is not an audience. This is not anything. This is people that he cared about and was touched by. And he said, I just want to say um, that having, I really, I'm trying to get it almost close to reality of what he said. I just want to thank you for welcoming, you into, welcoming me into your home. And... Uh, how much it means to be with you all. And thank you for taking me in. And um, I just really appreciate it. And it was something almost, I'm almost close to what he said, but you know, I didn't record the damn thing. And my kids didn't take notes and I'd raised them anyway. Um, so it was, and he, he was tearful, you know, it was real. And that's our relationship. That was always our relationship. And, a lot of you that are close to him, uh, or whoever's listening, I'm, a lot, I'm talking to five people probably. No, I'm talking to probably 100, 200 people that maybe know him on a deep level. And then the rest of you, I'm just feeling your pain because this is one of those uh, bad ones. This is just one of them, you know. Um, he... Uh, he just had... a a great deal of love. And that's how I remember him, is the love that he had. And we would screw around when we were in our 40s and hug each other, and then he would, you know, make a move and then have ungodly human strength, gargantuan strength for an angular, thin lad, man. And, um, and then I would attack him back in an overly physical way, uh, which he, he enjoyed doing with some people. And he had some off-road habits, which I won't discuss. But there's, uh, you know, the funniness, the incredibly deep funniness came from his deep, deep feeling of things. And he felt things incredibly heavy. And yeah, it is, uh, I don't think it's strange that Norm MacDonald kept nine years of cancer a secret. And I know that everyone that was on his business team in the closest of ways were sworn to secrecy. And that is, I think, completely appropriate. And I also think he thought he was going to beat it. And, uh, and I do feel that he's at peace now. I truly do. I'm really sorry that he's that a lot of you are uh, going through this, um, and those that aren't and are discovering Norm for the first time, definitely do it. Do what people have been doing for two days. A lot of people I know have been doing it. They've been going through everything. Go through them all. Go through every Conan appearance. Go through. Read his book. Watch his Netflix special. It's definable, and he knew it was. And he knew his book was because Norm was incredibly proud of himself and confident because he was an accelerated person. And I think things that happened in his career that didn't go the way he wanted also hurt him. It hurt him. You know, he was, he was hurt by it, but he also knows showbiz and he was very realistic about it. And you can read all of this. You can read it in his book. You can read it in interviews. There's some wonderful interviews out there because he had a, a sage's approach to many, many things. And he also knew who the good people were. And, God damn it, he knew who the funny people were. So, I guess that's, uh, I, could, I could go on with other stories about him, but it's, um, 
it's all out there. So do yourself a favor if you haven't watched everything. Definitely read his book. Definitely watch his Netflix special. And watch everything you can from the moment he started doing it. And go through all the SNLs you want. He's just a, he's a gift. Norm MacDonald was a gift to all of us. And I will miss him always. And um, I will always love him. So uh, I hope what rubs off on me is amidst all of his trickery, which he always said he was doing, and his charlatan moves, which he always said he was doing, is the fact that that self-awareness and that honesty is what help, helps make me strive to be more honest. And uh, I think a lot of people feel that way right now. We've lost someone that cut through to the heart of things, even with some of the most uncomfortable circumstances, and then would do it for his own pleasure. A lot of it was to bring himself pleasure. And he did not love the reiteration of stand-up and thought it was like a a joke and you know he goes to town like a carney barker and does the same stuff but i would differ with him on that and i did i got to, i got to i got to tell him and i think that's the closeness also is anybody that got the man so if you want to do anything to honor norm don't just do it like once you know um, honor him by getting him honor him by trying to understand if you don't Get it. Just watch his stuff. Watch as much as you can. Watch when he hosted SNL. That's fucking hilarious. He was uh, beautiful. He was an amazing father. Um, he was an amazing son. He was a great brother. And he was a great friend. And uh, I would just say, uh, I think he is resting in peace now. And I love you, Norm. And God bless you. Take care, everybody.